be making basics. What's going on, YouTube? It's your man, Ever J Music, the owner of Beat Making Basics, and I'm back again with another dope video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell notifications so you know when I post. And like and comment on this video, man. Um, this, we're back with another dope video, man. This is going to be the third part of a series where we've been doing making a beat in 10 minutes or less. Um, this beat is a trap beat, and we're in the section of mixing the beat in 10 minutes or less. I'm not going to go into super, super detail on this, but I'm going to show you some tips, man, that I use to mix my beats. And I'm going to do it in 10 minutes or less real time. All right. So we'll go ahead and start the timer and now. OK, we're going to start it now. I'm going to give you all a little preview of the beat, especially if you haven't already listened to the series or whatever. But let's just listen to it. So you kind of get a vibe of what's going on with it, right? Now, honestly, like the first thing I do when I'm mixing my beats, especially like with hip hop, trap, anything like that, is I come right over here to the stereo output bus and I go ahead and add like a mastering plugin, okay? I put Isotope, I'm using Isotope 7, Isotope 7. I know it's an old Isotope, but I'm familiar with it, I'm using it, okay? So, um, I come over here, I just do the default, I click off of um, equalizer click off of the dynamics and I used to use the maximizer I take the ceiling down to negative one put on true peak limiting take the threshold up to zero click on I R C three and clipping BAM so now if I listen to here you know what I'm saying it's not going above and beyond right Let me make sure that um, Okay, cool. All right, next thing I'm going to do usually is I come in here where the kick is and I just I just go ahead and add a uh a, a, an effect or a plug-in that's going to make that kick punch through the mix a whole lot more. Again, this is not necessarily the best rules to the to the game, but this is something that works for me. Um I use Smack Attack. All right, click on stereo. Click on load, go to drums and kick the sun start off there you'll just see the difference i'm going to play it without the smack attack and then i'll play it with it <laughs> You can hear the kick a little bit better. Again, I don't really even come. I, I kind of pre-mix it when I, as I'm making it. I don't even really overdo do it on the mix. Sometimes I feel like it, it's better that way. But um, I kind of cheated in my other video by bringing this down and this down a little bit. But let's just go ahead and come in here. I'm going to bring that 808 down just a little bit because you don't want it to be overpowering in the mix. So let's listen to it. <laughs> Sometimes I also will go ahead and throw the smack attack on the snare as well. So we'll do that as well. Stereo, come over to load, drums, and I go down to like, I play around with the smack attack, whichever one fits the song. I'm thinking it's going to be this like, either the choked, let's just listen to it. We'll go with this choked. All right. So that's the main thing I, I do. I make sure that the kick 
in the snare popping through the mix some there's other ways to do this but i mean again we're doing this in 10 minutes or less man so we're gonna use plugins <laughs> So next thing I'm going to do is just go through and do a basic EQ. I usually use subtractive EQ and, and honestly, there's nothing wrong with this stock plugin EQ. So I use that. If you want to get fancy, you can go in there and use a waves plugin or that fab filter or something like that. But um, I go to the field to the uh, sample and we're going to cut out a lot of the low end. So you can really hear the 808 popping through the mix. Already sounds a little bit cleaner. I'm going to go ahead and also do cut out a little low end on the snare as well, but not so much. Do it as well with the hi hat. I'm gonna bring a little bit more, probably put it around 1K or 500. Cut all of that out. All right. Kick, I don't really EQ it too much. Just gonna throw like a little guy right there. It's pretty much ready to go. And what you can do too is you can take out some of the highs on the kick as well. So you get that, you know, it's not interfering too much with some of the other instruments on that. Um, and we got these other instruments in here. Let's see. So I'm going to go ahead and now EQ this guy. Take out some of the, take out some of the uh, low ends and even some of the mids, to be honest with you. So that sounds a little better. I'll bring that down some more. We'll bring in this second sound right here. It's already thin, so we're not going to do too much to it, but we'll just take it out. All right, cool. Now that we got pretty much the riser i'm gonna leave it alone now that we pretty much got everything i'm gonna go ahead and push this over here to the left or right and push this over here just a little bit to the left um and i might even also t push the main sound uh just nudge it just a little bit to the right hi-hats we can use a plug-in called um it's by cable guys it's called pancake so what I'm going to do is come in here. If I left it alone, it's going to be doing this little loop pattern. That's cool. But what I like to do is come over here, push delete. Now you got a straight line. And I'll come over here to this guy, put this on. And just every once in a while, I'll just dip it over here to the left or the right. So let's try that. You can still nudge it to the left or right a little bit. We'll take the snare over just one little nudge. All right. And I know this is not crazy, crazy mixing, but you know, it's it's gonna sound pretty professional overall. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is we'll come over here to this uh mixing window there. I know that the kick is clipping there, but don't worry about it. Um, I'm gonna go over here and copy this EQ put him right there oops move this half time down and move him right there and um, we'll probably also take this little riser and we could throw a little bit of a um let's do that we'll just go ahead go ahead and throw a little um, pancake on him We'll throw a little pancake on them. Let's listen. You know what I mean? I'll bring them in just a little bit. All right. Bring 
him in just a little bit. I don't want him having too crazy cray cray. And there you go. Overall, I mean, the mix is pretty much ready to go. What I could do as well is I could throw a little bit of a um, reverb on the hi-hat, which I'll go ahead and do. There's already some uh, reverbs there, but I'm going to use a separate bus. I'm going to send the reverb here and use an aux track. So we'll go ahead and throw this reverb there, put it right there, and I'm going to pull it up some. Nothing too crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? For the most part, this is going to be done. I'm going to listen to it on low, on a low level on the speakers real quick. Just to make sure that nothing's busting out too crazy. Just give me... Now, one last tip here. You see the 808, I'm not really doing a whole lot. I'll just go ahead and do that. And if you want to, you can take out some of the high on that. Maybe dip it a little bit. But, but I try to leave the 808 alone, to be honest with you. Um, and all I really do, excuse me, is I come over here and... I add a little saucy, you know, distortion to it, make it sound a little bit more aggressive. see man i mean again the mix is not perfect but it is professional you know what i mean it is a professional mix and so i'm gonna listen to it one more time let's kind of let y'all just hear the iciness of the mix i could come over here and also add a little um reverb but when you really go into like alchemy they already got like enough reverb and delay and stuff like that and so that's why i didn't process too much of the instruments a lot of this is just by picking the right instruments for me personally. That's why I feel like it is when it comes to mixing. You want to pick the right instruments, especially when you're uh, mixing like digital music. You feel me? Like if I was mixing like, you know, live guitars and all this type of stuff, it would be a whole lot of a different process. I don't think you could really get it done in 10 minutes. But for the like, you know, making beats and stuff, you can kind of get to a little system and get a good mix in 10 to 20 30 minutes max type vibe but that is the video man 10 minutes or less on the mix man um i'm gonna let you hear some of this beat i'm gonna play it off for the second from the second uh verse and let it play out and then we'll 
You know what I'm saying? All you got to do is subscribe, man. We got more videos like this coming on. And uh, make sure you hit the like button, too. And leave me a comment as well. And I appreciate y'all watching. So we out. I'll let you just going to play out from this year, y'all. You know, I know I said I was done, but I'm going to leave you a couple more words on this. Like, obviously, a 10-minute mix is a starting point. You want to still go ahead and listen to it and all that good stuff. But I wanted to just tell you that it is possible to get a pretty good or decent professional mix on your beats in 10 minutes or less using some of these techniques and using some of these plugins, man. Um, but, yeah, peace. <laughs>